looking at the job setup, which is the first thing you want to do within the software. So this is setting up your width and your height. So you could treat this as the piece of material you're about to stick in your design itself, or you could treat this as like a workbed of your actual machine itself. You can manually type in the width and height and you can change the adjustment from millimeters to inches or back from millimeter inches to millimeters. You have a thickness of material, which is how thick your block of wood, plastic, acrylic, whatever you're actually working with is. You have your origin. As you can see here, we have center and showing on our workspace it's centered. If I put lower left and click OK, you can see it's rescaled my design and gone to the lower left corner. If I change the width and the height, click OK, you can see my workspace has changed. So this is what we call a workspace within CNC. So I'm just going to make this a nice simple 300 by 300 millimeters. And you can see it's created a square with my origin or where my tool home starting position will be bottom left hand corner. In most cases, we tend to start in the center of a job, specifically if we're working with circular designs themselves. So you can see we've got our 300 millimeter by 300 millimeter with our job in the center. We're now going to import a design. This can be done by selecting the import dialog, scrolling to the file you want and opening. As you can see, the vectors, the SVG have come in. And what we're going to do is drag them into the center and then we're going to look at the alignment and scaling options. So first we have the scaling options, which is this icon here. We can manually scale by dragging one of the areas or you can type in a dimension into the box here. We can also use the scale factor option to put in a multiplier. So we could say, for example, two times the size. Hit apply and done, and it rescales it. Now we're going to take a look at alignment. So if we just go to the align button and just hit align or center, we can see all of the text gets slammed together. Now, the one thing with the text is you can see it's separate vectors. So we need to select all of those vectors and we need to group them together. So when we select them in carbide opens different options. We hit the button once it's got a little X next to it that groups them together. So when I select everything now, go to my alignment tool and hit center making sure I align to stock first, we can see it's moved it. It was just very fraction out of the center itself. Okay, so the next thing to look at, if we're happy with our designs, we have created the vectors or imported the vectors. We have things grouped and we have things aligned in place. We should take a look at toolpathing our job. In toolpathing, you have a few options, contour, pocket, texture, V-bit, and advanced V-bit carving. We're gonna go for pocketing, which is area clearance. We can select a tool and we have a huge library of tools from carbide in here. You can search by material or you can search by the machine. I'm going to just see what the Nomad has. So a few options there, softwoods, hardwoods, aluminiums, and you can go end mills, V-bits, and so forth. And click on the shape OK. And again, we'll go for the softwood. Look at this, end mills. So there's a few different options there for tools, all with the tool numbers on them that correspond to the tools on carbide. 
I've got a 16th inch tool here. So we're going to take a look at that. See the blue selectable button at the top that will take you to the tool information. And we have the ability to change our step over, our cutting depth, our plunge rate, our feeds and speeds, and our spindle speed. It says there all of the units are in millimeters. So I typically going to change my plunge rate to 150 and my feed rate to 300. So that's 300 millimeters per minute. And again, OK, we'll accept that for us. We can do our maximum cut depth. So that's how deep we're going to cut into our material. Now, if we remember, we set our material up to be 12 millimeters deep. And we can name our job as well. So it just goes ahead and calculates and see that it's got into all of the areas quite well but it says it's going to take 259 minutes. I'm going to show a simulation. So this is what it would look like as it came off the machine as it stands. And then I have options there that I can turn off show toolpath so I can see exactly what it will look like without that toolpath sitting over the top of it. If I want to speed things up i can go in and change tools or change any of my speeds and fees so i'm going to edit the tool i feel it's slightly small tool wise but i don't know without sticking it on there and running a simulation so i'm going to go for the next size up so the eighth inch over the 16th so again speeds and feeds 150 and 300 my step down my cut per pass however you want to call it to a quarter inch and okay and okay so we can see it's 312 minutes on this one it's a bigger tool but it doesn't look like it's got into the same amount of areas so yeah it's not quite got the level of detail around the creator text itself so i'm probably going to have to go back and change it to my 16th inch tool again lots of different tools in here lots of ability to play around with but there we go i'm going to go for that 16th inch tool i'm going to change my cut down pass so my how deep it's going to cut per pass to quarter of an inch 150 300 and adjusting my spindle speed as well Again, they're different on every single machine you go for. All right, so we'll select OK. It's calculated it, 638 minutes. That's fine, we'll leave it as that. Show the simulation just to check it's OK. So this is very, very basic area clearance or pocketing. Taking a, an area out with a tool. Now, some software allows you to do multiple tools. So you could start with that, um, say, a half inch and then work your way down till you get to a 16th or a 32. It would mean multiple tool changes, but actually it would drop the machining time down massively. Right. So we've set in the correct speeds, feeds, figures. We obviously have the toolpath updated. We want to show our simulation again just to double check now the one thing with carbide is it always seems to be doing a offset toolpath so you don't get the choice to say i want a raster toolpath i want a spiral toolpath you actually just get an offset toolpath it is quite a nice toolpath though all right so now we're going to take a look just we're going to check the depth so we did choose 12 millimeters so what we're going to do now is a contour or a profile or a cutout pass. Three things you'll probably hear it called. 
different software calls it different names the different people call it different names now i've picked pocket in there by mistake so i probably don't want to use that i think we'll have to uh, cancel this and uh, and go back and do a contour as it's called again um it can be called profiling um it can be called cutout passes and what we're going to do with that is we're going to chop out the piece and we're going to leave something in there called bridges so you can see um this is a pocket toolpath this is not what we're going to use quite a common mistake that you can do we're going to go for the first option so we're going to select that vector hit contour going to cut down to that 12 millimeter depth so all the way through you have the option to pick your tool again but we're going to use the same tool you can go inside you can go outside as well so you can go inside the vector you can go outside the vector i'm going to do some tabs so these are what hold the image in they can be called bridges they can be called tabs and you set a width and a height and then what you have to do is click on them. Now, a tip for this is try to do it on a straight edge because it makes it easier to cut it out afterwards. You're probably going to saw and sand this. You're going to use clippers. Depends on the size. But the trick is to do it away from a curve where possible. Just makes it easier. Makes it easier for it to blend in. All right, so they're in place. You can rename this if you choose. You can adjust your tool. I like to go in and just check that my feeds, my plunge rate and everything is correct. This can be a big mistake for breaking tools. If you don't double, triple, quadruple check your cut down per pass, absolutely everything you're doing. OK, so we're going to calculate this. It says it takes 54 minutes to do this cutout. I'm going to show a simulation. I like to do this just to check uh, what it's going to look like as it comes off the machine. But also when I'm doing contours or profiles, that the bridges are there. They okay? just checking that they're in place. Some software does something called 3D bridges, which just speeds up your tool path. This is a 2D pass. So this is where, or a 2D tab. Now this is where things can go wrong is because your tool has to go around it, retract up, go across, go down and go round. So the next stage is to save our G code. And we are basically saving out our code to go to our candle software, our UGS or our Mac three software. So we're going to save that out and that we're going to import that in this case into candle. So that saves out all the machining code for or from carbide create. So this next stage in Kendall is just as simple as file open, find our file itself, click open, it imports us, it for us. In the bottom right hand corner, it tells us a time that it's going to take, but you have to be careful if you've used Kendall before and you've used the overriding option. So I have used an overriding feed rate, which happens to be in red on the right hand side, at 173%. Now I'm going to turn that off so it goes back to its 100 and that's actually changed it to 6 hours 26 to machine this whole job. If I click it back on, 3 hours 53. Now I only ever do the overriding in a job once I've heard what the tool is like. Sometimes you can run 10% faster, sometimes you can run a lot faster. But it's not something you want to turn on until you've started the job itself and you've heard what the tool is going to do. So that was just a simple introduction to using Carbide Create to do some pocketing, to do a profile or a contour pass, to cut out a job, very simply using Carbide Create.